Today I'm going to um, talk to you a little bit about creative packaging. And I'm going to show you some examples of things I've done just this morning after last night's, last night's Facebook Live on Stamp and Scrap with Mary Nabe, I wanted, I decided I wanted to do something different than cards today, but I went to bed without knowing what exactly I would do. And this morning was still kind of a blank slate. And I decided I'm going to just start wrapping some Christmas presents. Um, Emily's coming home from school, and that means she will be around staying here, and which also means Andrea will probably be around a little more than usual. And I thought, I want to get these things in my bedroom um, wrapped, so they are truly surprises on Christmas Day. And I came across one gift that I needed to do something different for. I can't say what it is, because sometimes my girls go back and watch these. Um, to support me, which is awesome and um, just wonderful to have their support. They know how much this Stampin' Up! job means to me. But this gift came in a cardboard tube. So I decided to leave it in the cardboard tube. I simply rolled or wrapped it with um, pretty wrapping paper. And then I chose a bright, real red uh, ruched ribbon from Stampin' Up. This is in our holiday catalog. And I like it because it doesn't have wires in, so it's easy on your scissors. And it's great for paper crafts, but I also like the width of it for um, projects like this, so for some real gift wrapping. So that's one idea. Pull some of those favorite ribbons and trims and use them on your gift packages, your boxes, your bags, whatever you have, okay? Now I want to show you, I'm gonna show you an example of um, a paper pumpkin box that I have repurposed. And I'm going to show you two and then actually walk you through the process of how I would uh, repurpose any kind of cardboard box. Okay, so this was the paper pumpkin kit. It made these beautiful cards, just love it. And if you're not doing paper pumpkin, I feel like you're missing out. They have just gotten better and better and better as um, we've gone through the six years. And they are truly, truly an awesome value for $22. What you get in here, so for example, this one in particular, um, made 10 cards. It's got all the layers and pieces. Everything is already die cut for you. And it even comes with a little stampin' spot, the envelopes, um, dimensionals, pretty much everything you need, with the exception of maybe a pair of scissors and some snail or multi-purpose glue. But this was the October kit, and, and it came in a box that... Um, had pool party and then the white birch trees and all of the paper pumpkin boxes have the paper pumpkin by stampin up logo in the center of it so with the exception of not wanting the paper pumpkin branding on my gift box i thought i could put this to use and i have a gift for each of my girls and it's something that i want them to open up together it's something that um I'm giving them like an experience gift, an activity gift. Um, so it's something I want them each to open together because it's intended that they would do this activity together that I'm gifting them. So I wanted some unique boxes, but also boxes that um, would include the small gift plus the gift certificate for this activity. So I started with my plain old paper pumpkin box and I decided that I would decorate it to um, with this theme. So all I did was cover the four sides. I wrapped this pretty Stampin' Up! ribbon around. This is Poppy Parade cardstock and ribbon I've used. And this is just one of the cards I made in the kit. 
I backed it on a um, piece of Poppy Parade cardstock and I added a tiny little trim here because there was still a little bit of the logo showing, but I didn't want to move this over and cover up this pretty cardinal, okay? Let me show you another one I made. Same thing, okay? This was the November kit um, that has all these fun winter gift tags. And when I'm repurposing a paper pumpkin box, I often will just use some of the contents of that box because it makes it easy. I don't have to do a whole lot of thinking, okay? And here I just covered up the sides um, to um, cover up the paper pumpkin advertising. Um, there was a little paper pumpkin banner advertising here, so I covered that with this pretty layer, a gift for you. And then I used all these elements from the kit itself, okay? And again, just a simple standard box. Now on the other one, I had the front flap tucked in. Um, this box got a little bit damaged in shipping, so I decided I wanted to cover that up and after I put my gift inside, I'm just gonna put like a little dimensional there to hold it closed, okay? So let's make one together and I will show you, um, and unfortunately, I don't always do my kits when they first arrive. I have to get into a better habit of doing that because I really do enjoy them. Um, and I want to be able to use the cards and things. Um, that I'm making or that the kit is intended for. Plus, it's just a nice break for me from the designing and creating. I just get to sit and do, okay? So this is from November 2018. And I know I had a couple of these. So I know, um, I think I had two of these kits. So I made some, but then went ahead and punched pieces and whatever, but I never really completed the second set. But it has the card bases, envelopes, all this pretty pre-printed plaid, um, sequins, all kinds of fun things. And then, oh, I need this red tissue paper for something else, for another gift package. <laughs> um, let me get rid of this little piece of vellum. And of course, it comes with a stamp set. This one is Cherry Cobbler, I sh and um, it comes with a stamp set, and the coordinating color is Cherry Cobbler, which is one of those little ink spots. But today, I'm just using my um, regular size stamp pads. It's the very same ink, and I like to be able to give those um, little stamp spots away or simply to use them as extras if I have a big group for a class or something like that. All right, so again, I'm going to redecorate this box, okay? And I'm going to show you how that. So the first step, and, and this applies to all boxes, not just paper pumpkin boxes, because I know you have lots of extra cardboard boxes someplace in your house and um, you might not have just the right gift wrap. You know, I never have birthday gift wrap when it need, I need it, it seems. So I'm going to start using plain boxes and decorate those for birthdays and such. But, um, so the first thing I do is take some measurements. Now the paper pumpkin boxes, and I always like to leave a little border because especially on these um, pretty patterned boxes, I'm gonna pull this piece of tape off. So on the bottom of, and or the top, if you wanna do both, I just do the bottom and I usually decorate the top differently. I just do the bottom plain. I cut my cardstock, my coordinating cardstock, nine and a quarter inches by six inches. And that just basically covers up that whole bottom because the paper pumpkin comes through the mail and I've got those labels that I want to hide. So 
11 by 9 and a quarter, 11 minus 9 and a quarter is 1 and 3 quarters. So I'm going to cut that much off. I'm going to turn it and cut this at 6 inches. And then I'm ready to add this to the back of my box. You want a good amount of adhesive, but you don't have to go crazy. And I'm going to do it just like that. And if a little bit of the label is showing, well, that's okay. Or you can just move this down a little bit. But remember, this is the bottom. Okay. Now, the sides, I'm going to cut two pieces that are nine and a quarter by one and a half. Okay. Let's see. Let's do it this way because I'll have to cut another one, anyways. got my nine and a quarter here right here and by one and a half and I need that twice if I'm going to do the front and the back and I might change my mind about how I'm doing the sides along the way but this is a simple easy way okay very simple easy way to just cover up the entire side of a box Alrighty. Now I also need two pieces that are six inch by one and a half for the short sides. I'm working at my kitchen island today. I decided during lives I'd rather be standing up. Plus there was so much sunlight today. Um, that I can get a, a lot of natural light in my kitchen here, although my yellow lights above are kind of throwing off the color. I have not started moving anything down to my new craft space in my finished basement because um, carpeting will not be installed till um, probably Thursday next week, middle to late week unless he's able to get it a little earlier. Okay. Now here's where I really could decide to just cover this up. Okay. And leave that blank. But just for sake of ease and time, I'll just do my standard covering of the sides. So again, you can do this with any box. You simply start with measuring all your sides if you're going to put cardstock or designer series paper if you have a plain white box or a plain black box anything like that um, you might decide to put on uh, some designer series paper okay and then I have this in front as well okay I'm not sure what I'm gonna do but this will be showing because of the way this box closes okay I think they've changed the version a little bit okay so now I have this to contend with all right I think what I would like to do is there are some beautiful beautiful prints in here there's the card bases that would go on the prints like that this is set up for a vertical card as they all are really um, and here's one I started putting together. But I don't care for this lighter plaid as much as I do the darker one. And I think what I'm going to do is actually, hmm, trying to decide if I want to use this card base or if I want to put the green behind it. Oh, what do you think? I hope we agree because I'm going with the green behind it. So I'm going to cut this to five and a quarter by four inches. Okay. 
Now again, if you're not using your paper pumpkin kit, you just pick um, any stamp set, any designer series papers, embellishments, whatever you like, okay? Whatever you like. But this just gives you some basic ideas of kind of my thought process while I'm creating. Ugh. Okay, cut it the wrong size. It should be five and a half. I might have to cut another piece. Nope, five and, it should be five and a half by four and a quarter, I'm sorry. I cut it the same size as um, the card layer, the front layer for the card base. Sorry about my froggy throat today. It feels a little bit better than it did last night and a little bit better since this morning. Okay, and I'm gonna lay it on there just like that. And I'm gonna take a look and see what else I have in this kit. Okay, card base, envelopes. There are lots of these green, um, evergreen leaves, okay. Um, I punched some sayings already. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you and yours. I kinda like that. Okay, I'm gonna use both of these. And what I'm going to do, oops, is put some dimensionals on the back of this. Did you know that our paper pumpkin kits also come with dimensionals and glue dots? Yes, they do. Everyone has a stamp set that you can use over and over and over, which is awesome, in addition to your little ink spot. And you know, the ink in the ink spots is the very same as those in the um, a regular classic Stampin' Pads. So you can use the refills on those little ink spots at any time. Oh, it looks like a few more people have joined me. Hi, Rosie and Mary Lou. Somebody else, Sue Young jumped on. I'm happy to see you and have you watching. Okay, the one thing I did not, print. oh, I did. I'm gonna use my roll of glue dots though to put these on and this one I want to go underneath the label but on top of the vellum and I'm gonna do a couple more of those like that here just gives some more dimension when you have things um, that are laying flat and layered on top of each other. I'm gonna go like this. Okay. And I just kind of play with it. I don't, there's not a whole lot of thinking going on as I do this, as you can see. All right. And then the kit also comes with some sequins. And these do have adhesive backs on. There's large ones and small ones. If I can get them open. Put a large one here. And perhaps here on the greenery. And then I'm going to use some small ones. just to put on the label here. How about one, two, oops, and pull off the um, adhesive with that one. And then I think I'm gonna put one up here as well, okay? And that's it. Oh no, it's not. Look, hi Tammy, thanks for joining me. Anybody, if you can click share right now, just click the word share. I would appreciate it so, so much. Okay. And this, I'm just going to pop up on dimensionals right there. Okay. 
I can't wait to get my basement craft space set up. I'll have my workspace, I'll have um, a place for classes, and my intention is to set up a permanent spot where I can take photos and do my Facebook Lives that I won't have to take down and move and all that. So I'm very excited about this. I feel like I might need another something here, but I don't know what that is. Oh, let's use this. This came with the kit too. Why didn't I do this last year? I guess I had just moved and was working a new job and what have you. But is this so cool? This is cherry cobbler braided twine or baker's twine. And I'll trim off my ends. Kind of like how those ends are curling from being on the spool. So I'm going to leave those ends kind of long because I do like that curling. Do you ever have something that you use frequently, but every time you look at it, it reminds you of somebody? The scissors charm was made by Jenny Gilbert on my Mary Stampers team, and I just love it. It's got the crown, an M, and the charm laugh. But I, I truly do think of her every single time I use it. I'm gonna put two glue dots on the back of this knot to make it stick nicely. And I think I'm gonna put it right here. This one's just a wee bit longer than I would like it to be. Okay, what do you think? How many of you have boxes piled up? Either paper pumpkin boxes or some other kind of uh, cardboard box. It could even be cookie tins. I have decorated some cookie tins in the past. I would love to show you some of these things, but I've either given them away or they're packed in my unfinished basement where I can't get to them until um, the carpet is laid and I can start pulling things out of there because it's just packed full. Okay, I love it. And I do think somebody could receive this box with a wonderful gift inside and be thrilled. I think they would probably be just about as thrilled with the packaging as the gift itself, okay? All right, so let me move this out of the way. And we'll do one more quickly. It also is a paper pumpkin box, but not totally different, um, totally different look to it. So I'm just going to pull all these things away because they went with the other kit. I think I got it all. So here's the next one. Does anybody remember this one? Black and white, this is from November of 2017, and I believe October and New November last year. Um, no, maybe that was the October. I don't remember. But it seems like we had two of these boxes. Um, two months in a row we had the black and white buffalo check. Now remember too, these boxes tend to go through the mail. So they always have that, um, what do I wanna say, that label on. Oh, what happened to my black cardstock? Okay, I don't see the black here. But we will improvise, okay? And this is crazy, I'm like pretty much out of all of my 11, um, eight and a half by 11 cardstock. Ah, isn't that awful? How does that happen? Red cardstock at Christmas time? So right after this, I need to get online and order some more. And now remember, when I'm covering the back, I'm using a piece that is six inches by nine and a quarter. I just pulled out the arm. Here. okay so that will be fine I was going to put black on the 
back side, but that's all right if I use the red. And I'm thinking holiday right now, so that's why I chose red. I'm working with real red this time instead of cherry cobbler. So I'm just gonna put that on the box. Another thing I, I tend to do also when I'm creating like this, I pick my color scheme and I just pull out the cardstock colors. So for the previous box, I used garden green and I also had cherry cobbler and very vanilla pulled out because that was the color scheme I was sticking to. Okay, for this one, the color scheme is the real red, the garden green, and white, okay? Yes, Lisa Johnson, this was from the stocking kit. And I have this one left that I haven't done anything with. It came with, oh, I wanna say maybe blueberry bushel. It was a blue, Night of Navy. It came with a blue ink spot, but I'm going to um, stick with the real red. I thought this was real red, but maybe that's cherry cobbler in there. We will find out. So this is how the kits typically come packaged. They are sealed in plastic. There's a cardboard base so things don't crinkle too much. Directions and color photos. And then all the pieces that you can punch. You know what, I was wrong. I think this is cherry cobbler. It is. Okay, I can switch that later though. That was my bad. Okay, one thing I wanted to mention too is that some of the boxes do have um, writing on the inside. So what I would do personally is cover that up. You don't have to, but I think it's just going to make a nicer gift package for you. So again, I'm going to go with nine and a quarter inches by six inches for this top. And I can go back and um, put one on the bottom side, which I probably will, or maybe I'll cover it with the black. But I think this makes a nice pop of color inside. Um, this is a little bit shorter, so I think we can go nine inches for the lid. The lid's going to be a little bit smaller since it's fitting in inside the bottom base. And what a nice surprise somebody can have when they open it inside as well. Okay. And then on here, I might just wanna cover a portion of that because I like these snowflakes around. So let's see, how about this? And I cut it right about here. I'm not even measuring, I'm just kind of sticking it with my finger where I think it should be cut. I think six and a quarter is gonna, or six inches is going to be about right for this. So let's find out. Yes. A six inch piece will work fine. Oh, I forgot about this though, but that's all right. We'll figure something out to cover up that paperpumpkin.com label. I'm going to center it in there. <clears throat> okay, and now I'm just going to go to my kit and see what there is that I can use to decorate with. There's snowflake labels, and which could be used any direction, horizontal or vertical. There are these Christmas tree labels used in the vertical position. There are lots of fun leaves. I will also say about paper pumpkin kits, they give you plenty, plenty of the pieces, okay? So you don't have to worry about not having enough pieces 
or what happens if you make a mistake on stamping one of your labels. You can always work that out with a paper pumpkin kit because they give you plenty. They also have these cherry cobbler banners, which I love. Those are plain, so of course you can use them in any direction. You can layer them up with the white labels if you like. And then, of course, an awesome stamp set. Merry and Bright, Let It Snow, Joy, Two From. Oh, this is a great Two From. I always love those. Snowflakes, Leaves, Stars. And then, of course, the Little Stockings. And I do somehow want to incorporate this stocking into here, and I haven't decided how just yet. I will say, I do think a gift card would fit in here. Has anybody tried it? I'm thinking a gift card. I don't have my purse handy, but I'm thinking a gift card could fit in there nicely, or some candies. If you have a college student who needs change for laundry machines, this is a great place to do that. If you're giving cash, you could also tuck some cash in there for a gift okay so I am not sure how I'm using this but I know I want to number one cover that up but also use this that would be fun to do as well you could have a bigger gift in here and maybe put some candy canes in the stocking right there but let's go back to the outside of the box and see what we can do there. We could also use gold as part of our color scheme, which actually I have some gold right here from another project I was working on. And I am going to post a challenge to people today. Oh, I should measure that. So this is, I'm just going to measure with my, um, what do I want to say? My trimmer, my paper trimmer. So I'm just looking to about here is about five inches. And then the width, one inch looks to be about three and a half, a little less. So I'm going to cut this four and three quarters. Let's try four and three quarters by three and three quarters. And again, if you want to take the time and measure it out with your ruler, by all means, you should. I'm not sure what I did with mine. I thought it was right here. I've been doing, working on a lot of different projects today. Some in my craft room, some out here. Okay, so I need to make this maybe four and a half. So how's that? Four and a half by three quarters? Nope. <laughs> Come on, Mary. I did not do a good estimate. Four and a quarter by three and a quarter. How's that? Okay, four and a quarter by three and a quarter. All righty. I think it needs some color there. You could do something like this. Okay. And I feel like I should stamp a little something on the label. Actually, let's use the tree on the front. And I'm going to stamp that with the two from. And I'm going to use my cherry cobbler ink. And you can see, I, when I told you that um, I would start with a color scheme, I should have opened up the package first because I was red, wrong on the red and green. It's actually cherry cobbler and old olive. Okay, so learn from my mistake. Cherry cobbler and old olive. I have a stamping block. Tap, tap, tap. And two from. Okay. I am actually going to pop 
pop this up on dimensionals when I put it on the label. I'm losing track of you. You like the top of the lid, Lisa? Good. And I want some of this red showing. So I'm going to do that. Some of that cherry cobbler. And then I'm going to adhere that to the gold. And leave a little gold showing on the left side as well. Oh, pretty, isn't it? Now, of course, we need to do something with these, don't we? So... Um, I'm not sure what I want to do. I think I will use some coming up here and then a little bit down here as well. With items like this, you don't need to have adhesive on the whole thing. I love that these are the same color on both sides because you can turn them opposite directions then. And it looks a little more natural that way if they're going in different directions. Okay. I'm going to put this one down here. Remember, I've got plenty more of these. And we still have to work on the signs. Joyce, you want your name on there to send it out? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe you'll be surprised. Somebody's going to be surprised, right? But it is pretty. Also, if you are not familiar with Paper Pumpkin, please know that when you purchase Paper Pumpkin kits, you can sign up for the um, Paper Pumpkin Fan Club Facebook group that was started by um, Rachel Tessman, she's an amazing demonstrator. She originally started this for her own customers. Sorry, I thought I put two on and I didn't. Started the uh, Paper Pumpkin Fan Club Facebook group for her own customers, but had so many requests she decided to open up to everybody. So I like to share with my customers that wonderful resource because it's definitely a resource I use Sometimes I make the kits exactly as um, shown in the directions, and other times I want to do something different or I have a different need um, and can go to that for new ideas. Uh, Lynn and Leslie, thanks for joining in. Hi, Katie Cooper. Remember, you can click the share at any time anytime. One thing I was going to tell you is you can always um, pull these pieces apart as well. Sometimes we don't need, you know, the whole, whole big shebang. We might just want a little something like here. Okay. Or I might want to put a little piece of dimensional on whoops I love my nails but they definitely are harder to craft with when you share you can share before during or after the um, Facebook live no matter when you share it's a help and I always always appreciate it and one of these days, when people get more used to sharing, I'm just going to throw out a surprise and say everybody who has shared for that Facebook Live will receive a free card or a free gift. Or perhaps I'll choose um, a random winner from those people that shared. Something different. Ooh, okay, I'm going to put that piece of tape right back. I guess I could have just left it. All right, now I want to cover up these sides. And I think what I'm going to do is just put this fun little label here. I think it would be nice to back it with 
the Cherry Cobbler banner. I want it to show just a little bit more than it was cut for. So start with your spacing at the end with the banner cuts. I'm gonna put this on the side. And it doesn't have to say anything if you don't want it to. And I'm gonna put, a, oh, there's some blank ones too, so you can make your own labels as well, or you use the back side. And I'm also going to put one on the opposite short side. Whoops, yes. Make sure I'm doing that right before I add the adhesive. Again, start with the banner side and get the ends, the right and left side even. Stick it down and then some more adhesive to adhere it to the side. Okay. And if you wanted to stamp something on there, you certainly could. There are labels that say Let It Snow, Merry and Bright, etc., etc. And I think for this one, I am going to stamp Merry and Bright on the blank label. And pull that off. I'm going to use the same block. I don't always suggest that, but I am. I don't know why, but something as simple as merry and bright just is very appealing to me. Um, just a simple such a simple message. Okay, so that can go there. Before I do that, however, before I adhere it, I would like to, I'm not gonna worry about the star so much, but I'm just going to quickly, well, I'm not going to. <laughs> I was going to say, we can fussy cut the tree. But for now, I'll let that go. But you could also punch it, um, use a circle to punch it. Where's the uh, snowflake one? I think that would be awesome. See, this is ha what happens when I'm creating on the fly and I have other stuff in the craft room. Not sure if you heard that, but there was my doorbell. I'm assuming I just needed to look really quickly and see if it was somebody here to work on the basement, but I think it was a package delivery. I feel like I need something more here, so I'm going to use the other label. Hmm, I think I'm gonna do this. Make it look longer and add a bit of red there. And if you want to save as much as you can and just use only what you need, just cut off a piece of that, that banner. Because we're only use, having a little bit to show. Okay, and now I think I am ready to add this to the front flap. I'm kind of bummed about the tape. I don't know if I can pull that off. And honestly, if you're having trouble pulling off any packing tape, just leave it. It's going to show less if you leave it than if you tear the, um, the box itself, the pattern on the box. Yeah, I think I'm going to like that, just like that. There. Okay, now again, I have some Cherry Cobbler Baker's Twine. I like to try and use as much of the things in the kit as possible. This time, I think I'm going to, since it's finer, I'm going to make a 
double bow. So you're just going to double up a length of the baker's twine and tie a knot as you normally would. Hello, Sue. Thanks for joining in. I'm happy you're here. And then I'm going to trim these ends. How did I end up with two pairs of paper snips here? I'm not sure. But better two than none, right? And I think I'll just add this. Hmm. I think I like it at the bottom here. By the greenery at the bottom. And then I still have space to write to from, you know, to Joyce from Mary. <laughs> okay. And lastly, inside, to make this extra pretty, I think we should add something there as well. And I'm just going to simply put this little um, snowflake tag. And it can go either direction. What do you think? Oh, I kind of like it this way. Let me see, a couple of dimensionals. You might want to put this flat in there instead of on dimensionals, and depending on what you are going to be um, putting in the box. And the only thing I haven't used, I believe, were there sequins in here? No, that was the other one. I did not use um, the mini clothespins, but that's okay, I'll use them for another project and I have not used the stocking. So what I'm going to do is, um, and I think, no, maybe it won't. Okay, I was thinking that the fast fuse would work for this, but I'll have to find something else. But I think what I would like to do ultimately, and maybe I'll just lay it in there with the gift, is um, this would be a good place to um, put a card or stick a gift card hold or a gift card, okay, right there. Um, you could even mount the gift card on a piece of gold foil. That would be pretty. And then perhaps I'll fill this with some chocolates or candy canes or something like that and just stick it in there as well because it's just a fun thing to do. So there you have another box. And again, all these tips don't apply to just paper pumpkin, but it's what I had available right now. Again, all my other um, boxes that I saved are in my unfinished basement, packed floor to ceiling with everything um, that was in the basement before. Well, not everything, I did get rid of some stuff, but furniture, everything, I can't even get to the normal stuff that I have in my unfinished basement, but that is soon to come. Okay, so my VIP, VIP members that are watching, I'm going to challenge you to find a bag or a box of some sort, any kind, any size, and redecorate it or decorate it for the first time. Um, if it's not a decorative box, if it's plain, um, using Stampin' Up! products, take a picture of it, and post it to this site. Each one of you that does that will receive a free embellishment in the mail from me. So that's your VIP challenge. And you have between now and December 24th. Okay, today is what, the 12th? So you have 12 days to create and decorate, design, decorate um, a plain old cardboard box, any kind of decorative box you might have, or even um, a gift bag, a plain gift bag. I'm going to put um, something here. I want that covered up. And I forgot about that side. So... I'm doing a one and a half inch strip to go right there. All right, ladies, thanks for joining me. I hope I have inspired you and given you some ideas of 
ways you can use Stampin' Up! products to decorate and repurpose cardboard boxes and gift bags and such. And we are going to be doing more um, gift giving uh, and creative packaging projects in the next few Facebook Lives. So a quick look at all the boxes. There's one that we made today. Here's a second that we made today. And then these two I made on my own this morning. Let me move these so you can... Okay. I made these two on my own this morning. All right. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, <clears throat> please do share it and invite your friends and family members who enjoy crafting to um, join my Stampin' Peace VIP group. I always love welcoming new people. And again, I hope you will accept my challenge of decorating and uh, repurposing a gift box or cardboard box or gift bag. Take a photo of it, post it here, and we'll all get to see ways that you used your own Stampin' Up! products to complete that challenge. Everybody who completes the challenge and posts a photo will receive a Stampin' Up! embellishment from me. So you have nothing to lose. And we all have lots to gain by seeing your wonderful ideas. Have a great day.